Hello again. For this video, I want to talk about a reading that I gave you a while ago. Um, it, I gave you this essay, Writing for an Audience. Um, I think it was under maybe week two or week three. I apologize for not getting to it sooner. Uh, I, I definitely meant to, but it kind of, you know, got focused on the essay and stuff, slipped through. So I just wanted to circle back on, on this essay, uh, Writing for an Audience. So I think the idea of who the audience were writing for in an essay is very important and something that gets overlooked. I think for most of our school life, whenever we have to write something, we, you know, we just take the teacher as the audience. Whenever you've had to write essays in the past, uh, I'm sure if you thought about who the audience was supposed to be, it was the teacher, you know, because you're trying to get a grade and you're trying to, you know, do what the teacher wants you to do so you can get that grade. I think that we need to change this, though. I think looking at it that way is a mistake for a few reasons. I, I, I think if we're writing with only the teacher in mind as a reader, I think that it encourages a way of writing that is just kind of, you know, checking boxes or, or just trying to show that we're following all the rules instead of focusing on really getting your point across or, or uh, actually convincing somebody. So I, I think it's a problem for that reason. I also think that it's kind of impossible to know what that specific teacher wants. Um, maybe you've experienced this before where, you know, you're trying to give the teacher what they want and you think you're doing that, but then that's not what they want. And I think a lot of teachers are not particularly good at letting the students know really what they want, um, especially teachers who, who haven't, you know, studied writing in the kind of systematic way that I, that I have through, through schooling. Like, you know, if you have a biology teacher, they, they, you know, they might have something in their head that they know that they want when they're, when they're reading uh, an essay to grade it, but maybe they don't know how to really communicate that um, because they're not a writing professor. So I, I think that there's a lot of problems with, with focusing on just the teacher when, when you're writing that kind of stuff. It, it also gets into a situation where it's like, you know, you feel like the goalposts are moving all the time. Well, this teacher wants that, this teacher wants that. And I just think ultimately it ends up being like a really frustrating kind of thing, you know? where, uh, you know, you're not writing to communicate anything. You're not writing what you think is good. You're trying to write what you think the teacher's going to think is good, uh, which, yeah, it just seems silly to me and kind of kind of a fool's errand. And, and I don't know how possible it is, honestly. So for our class, I would suggest for you to think about the other people in our class as your audience, uh, people who are your age, people who are just starting out in their college career, um, usually when I'm teaching on campus, I say, you know, imagine we grabbed somebody from the hallway and brought them in. Imagine they're your audience, you know, uh, your peers. I think that this is, it's important to think this way, um, for a few different reasons. I, I, I think that it can help us to focus on, yeah, more getting our message across, making sure that our writing is clear and that it's, you know, if we're writing an argument essay or something, that it's convincing and that we're giving the evidence that's going to connect with the audience. Um, so I just wanted to run through a few of the quotes in this essay and, and, and kind of break it down. So they give some advice about trying to write, you know, for an audience. So the first thing, the first headline uh, uh, that they have here, it says, analyze your audience. The first step in closing the gap is to gauge the distance between uh, you and your audience. So they say, imagine that you're a student writing your parents who have always lived in New York City about a wilderness survival expedition you want to go on over spring break. Um, so w w with that example, obviously, if, if, you know, the parents had always lived in New York City, haven't been camping or whatever, and then you're trying to write them a letter about a survival expedition, well, how would that be different than if you were writing about that same topic to, you know, someone who's been camping a bunch of times or a farmer or some kind of outdoorsy person? Um, I think it'd be different in a few ways. You would have to, like, th there'd be maybe certain terms or certain vocab words uh, that, that you would either want to explain if you're going to use them or maybe try to find like a different way of saying it. This is something I'm always thinking about with teaching, especially like when I just graduated college and I started teaching where like my, my thoughts would come to me just in these very academic ways that that would not, you know, be the ways that students would understand it. It wouldn't be the most helpful way for me to talk about these things with, you know, my, my younger students, my students who haven't been through uh, uh, college already. So that's, you know, just trying to think of like, well, how, how can I take what I want to say and the way I'm saying it and try to reach the audience with it, try to connect with this audience with it. Um, so, yeah, the first thing you need to do is to know your audience. And that that's going to depend on, on what class you're taking, what kind of writing you're going to do. But again, since this is, a, a, you know, kind of a, 
one of the first college classes you're probably likely taking, I think it makes sense to sort of think about the other people in the class. And then, you know, when you get to higher level classes and you're taking a, a biology class, a criminology class, you'll be writing for a different group of people. You'll be writing for experts, you know, you'll be writing for other scientists or, or whatever it is. And that's going to change the words that you use or the way you explain things um, and all that kind of stuff. So just having an idea in your head of who your audience is to begin with, I think is a good place to start. And again, something beyond uh, just the teacher. Um, okay, so another point to make here. So knowledge, one of the headings here, I, I think we kind of talked about, like, what, what does the reader need to know to understand what you're talking about? Um, how can you break it down in a way that's going to connect with them? Another thing that they mention here is attitudes. You want to think about what attitudes your reader is going to have towards the stuff that you're talking about. So I, I think generally, especially if we're writing like an argument essay, we want to have an idea of if our audience is likely to agree with us or to disagree with us, you know, because that can change the way you're going to present your argument and also the, the strategies you might use to try to make that argument. Excuse me. So for instance, just to give an example, if, you know, if, if someone, uh, you know, to, to give a political example, I guess, if someone was writing like a, like a pro Donald Trump article and they were going to publish it in the New York Times, you know, obviously most New York Times readers are, are not going to be a fan of Donald Trump. So, um, you know, that, that writer would know, like, I'm going to have to frame this in a way to appeal to these people. Um, whereas, you know, if, if they were, were writing that, that same article about how great Donald Trump is and they were putting it on, you know, Fox News or whatever uh, conservative uh, sort of political place, they know the audience is likely to agree with them, you know? So it just kind of changes how you're going to approach it and how you're going to try to make your argument. For instance, if your audience is likely to agree with you, you can rely more on, like, telling a personal story or just be like, oh, we all know how this is. Um, and they'll be like, yeah. Uh, and if your audience is, li is not likely to agree with you, you might want to come ready with more, like, facts, statistics, stuff like that. Like, I, I remember um, I, I used to do this essay that, that was about, like, economics, and I think it was specifically about, like, sweatshops, you know? And I remember, you know, I've taught, I've taught it at Bergen before, and, and me and the students are always kind of on the same side of, like, oh, like, workers being exploited, like, that's terrible, corporations, kind of evil. Um, so, so when I would talk about that sort of stuff, uh, the students at a place like Bergen are like, oh, yeah, like, we work these jobs and then, you know, not in sweatshops, but, you know, we work these jobs where, where we get treated badly and are exploited and everything. And when, when I, um, I also taught a course at Monmouth University, and when I talked about the same stuff, the same kind of economic stuff um, with those kids, they were much more, like, on the side of the owners, you know? They were like, oh, well, you know, the owners are taking all the risks setting up the business. Actually, the workers are lucky to have any job at all. Um, so... When when I would talk about this stuff with the kids at Monmouth, um, I would literally come with like statistics of like percentages and numbers and how much hourly and which money goes where. So I, I think having an idea of if your reader is likely to agree with you or not can, can help us to make our argument in the most effective way that we can, you know, or think about, well, what's going to convince this type of reader or, or what, what things does this reader believe and how can I like, you know, try to... Uh, weave that into what I'm saying. A another way that this can show up is kind of addressing counter arguments, you know? If you know that, that your reader is going to be against what you're saying for, like, a specific reason, then maybe you want to bring that up and be like, hey, I know what you're thinking. I know I know you're thinking that that the owners are actually the ones who take all the risk or whatever, but here's why that's wrong, you know? Or, or you know, wh wh whatever. Uh, you can kind of, like, address their concerns or any objections that they might have uh, in order to better convince them. So the last section that they have here, it says needs, thinking about the needs of your audience. And th th this depends on the kind of writing you're, you're going to do. Like, I think this maybe more applies to if you had to do any kind of writing for like a job or something. It says taking into account uh, the needs of your reader. Why is your reader reading this essay? What are they trying to get out of it? I think that is important for us. What, like, what, what, you know, maybe that helps us to focus on our thesis or, or the message that, that we're trying to get across. Because, you know, if, if, if someone is reading your argument essay about student loans or something, or about the price of college or whatever it is, uh, they're, they're reading it, you know, because they, they want to be convinced one way or the other. Or they want to see the argument broken down. They, they want to get a taste of the argument. Uh, so the, the examples that they give here are more kind of like work related and yeah, so they say, for instance, um, if you ask a friend majoring in biology how to keep your fish tank from clouding, you don't want to hear a textbook recitation on the life processes of algae, right? 
So, uh, you know, if, if you need like the answer to a specific question or something, you're not going to want all this like unnecessary background information. I, I think an example I've had with this is like, I remember one time I was working in an office uh, in Manhattan and I was in charge of ordering like the office supplies and stuff. And I got an email from someone who above me in the office and they were like, oh, should we, should we order regular printer cartridges or the extra large printer cartridges? And I was like, oh, I'll figure this out. So I did all this math, right? I was like, oh, well, the regular one gives you this much pages and the extra large one, it costs this much, but you get this many pages. And I got the, the price per page and all this stuff. So I sent an email to this person being like, oh, actually you want to buy this one and, and here's why, here's all the math, right? And, and they responded to me being like, um, didn't need all of the math problems, uh, but thanks. Uh, so I, I think that was a case of me not thinking about what the needs of my reader were. Right, the person emailing me just wanted to know which uh, printer cartridge to order. They didn't need to know seven cents per page instead of ten cents per page. Um, so yeah, you want to think about what your reader is trying to get out of your essay. Uh, just to read maybe the last paragraph here, they say effect, uh, effective writers are not simply expressing what they know; instead, they are using their knowledge, reorganizing, maybe even rethinking their ideas to meet the demands of an assignment or the needs of their reader. So yeah, again. I would just encourage you guys to think of a more general audience when you're doing these essays, because otherwise it just becomes this thing where, where yeah, you're trying to do tricks and perform uh, stuff like this in order to get the grade, where I, I think if, if you write for yourself and if you write for like an imagined audience that's more than one person, you'll keep your focus on getting your point across and keeping things as clear as possible and making the essay as convincing as possible. Write something that you like. You know, don't just try to jump through hoops because that's what the teacher wants. Write something that you feel good about. Because I think, one, that's a more enjoyable experience, obviously. But I also think that it will result in a better essay at the end of the day. And teachers just don't always know how to ask for what they want. So I think that's your best approach to taking your um, thinking audience. Okay, that's it for this video. Talk to you soon.